Right peeps, this is uh, Gaza investigating uh, the Committee on Climate Change and NFU and that sort of thing. And this is extremely scary stuff. Uh, before I carry on, thank you to all who subscribe. And please subscribe and share because this really helps to get this message out. Now, during the last week or two, I've been really looking in detail at stuff and I found this exchange between the NFU of Wales and the Climate Committee in the UK. And basically, that's what it's all intertwined in the UK with Wales and everything. And I'm in utter shock at what they're proposing for. The next 21 to 25 it's unreal the hill farming and stock farming will be removed now i'm going to go through this quietly bark i'm not going to read it all out because they give questions this parliamentary committee and then the nfu answer it but some of the questions is just they want to reduce 1400 farms off wales 1400 50 hectare farms to meet this environmental act uh, i'll go through it quietly bark like i said i can't say it all the uh the stuff they're asking for they've been to cop 23 i think it is and they've made this assurance to everybody and it's it's completely nuts i am literally in shock now the nfu have done a good job here to be fair they've answered it tidy they have stuck up for the farming community and i'm not having a go at them at all but what i'm more worried about is this climate change committee and this welsh committee and all the quangos and stuff involved in all this we have the whole of civil service trying to um basically remove hill farming uh let me try and find this where i was talking about before yeah uh, it's scary stuff it really is now these are the questions they answer and then the nfu has uh replied on uh, several of them in a good way like and if i get down a bit further you'll see what i'm on about uh the nfu are replying and Various things here. There's a question. Do you have any further evidence on the appropriate levels of Wales' third carbon budget, 26 to 30, 2026 to 30, and interim targets for 2030 to 2040 and the path of reduction of at least 95% by 2050? 95%. These things we're having at the moment are nothing compared to what we're going to have. Nothing. Now, here's what I found extremely worrying. Now, this is the NFU replying, and they're replying in a good way. Uh, if you read that yourselves there, the decarbonation policies are... Everybody's trying to help all this. But the chain, this is the bit I found, it just blew me away. We highlight the Future Trends report lacks of food security in agriculture... And productive capacity is a is the key gap between us widespread land use changes to meet decarbonization objectives is likely to lead to significant negative impacts for the farming and rural communities with loss of employment and rural vit vitality and associated irreparable damage to welsh culture language and rural well-being the Welsh government proposals for medium to large scale afforestation of 66,000, yes, 66,000 hectares, for example, will result in a loss of 1,400 farms, average size of 48 hectares in Wales. This does not represent a just transition in the burden is of fairly born in rural Wales. Our fair play for the National Farming Unions of Wales for replying to that, but listen to that again. Welsh Government proposals for medium to large scale afforestation, so basically planting, of 66,000 hectares 
for, which will result in a loss of 1,400 hill farms, average size of 48 hectares in Wales. This is completely insane. Farmers do, however, recognise there is a key role to play in the contribution to decarbonising Wales, and they are very much part of the solution in line with net zero. Uh, and also enhancing carbon storage on Welsh farms and can deliver increased hedgerows, woodland parcels alongside renewable energy, blah, blah. NFU have done a brilliant job answering this thing, but it's more the questions that's got me worried and what these people have agreed to. Here's another question here. Sector specific. Surface transport. Now this is a committee that's deciding all this. As laid out in Chapter 5 of the Net Zero Technical Report, the Climate Change Committee's further ambition scenario for transfer assumed 10% of car miles to be shifted to walking, cycling and public transport by 2050, corresponding to over 30% of total trips. That's all the public now. They want to remove 10% of all our cars and they want us walking around. Jesus Christ, all our personal freedoms are going to be gone here, yeah, I can tell you that. This has been an eye-opener for me. We have got a civil service all around the world joined together at the hip trying to take away our freedoms. And that is a fact. Another question here. What percentage of trips nationwide could be avoided through car sharing, working from home, shifted to walking, cycling or bikes? The public transport by, 20, to, by 2030 to 35 and by 2050. You know, these questions are pretty crazy stuff. Now listen to this, yeah. Remember, this is a climate change committee. This is a parliamentary committee. The Ch climate change committee recommends that our net zero advice that the phase out of conventional car sales should occur by 2035 at the latest. What are the barriers to phasing out sales of conventional vehicles by 2030 and how could these be addressed are the supply chains well placed to scale up what might be the adverse consequences consequences of total phase out of conventional vehicles by 2030 uh question 21 obviously these haven't been answered because people are looking at them the same as me and thinking they're off, off their heads but this is what this is going on net zero is going to destroy the uk in our net zero advice the climate change committee identified three potential options to switch from zero emissions hdvs hydrogen electrification will very fast charges and electrification of overhead wires on motorways what evidence and steps would be required to enable the operator to switch their fleets to one of these options they're crazy they're crazy Another one here, question 22. What policy mechanisms should be implemented to support decarbonisation of the sectors below? Manufacturing sectors at risk of carbon leakage. Manufacturing sectors at risk of carbon leakage. Not at risk. Fossil fuel production sectors, off-road mobile machinery. Now, NFU have answered this. Uh, they've answered these questions really good. I'm not having a go at NFU at all. They've been basically asked mental questions by a load of nutcases in the previous 2018-19 working group on electrical agricultural road vehicles chaired by the nfu under the government's industrial strategy it was concluded that reinforcement of electric infrastructure including buffer battery storage systems would be essential for charging relatively large electric vehicles options which are likely to be commercially available in 30 2033 to 37 the group considered is critically important that the government, through Ofgem, incentivize the distribution system operators to support electricity grid, electricity grid updates with new technology. In addition, improved digital infrastructure and connections, connectivity would enable the deployment of connected and autonomous vehicles in agriculture, addressing the government's grand challenge of future mobility in the rural community the group also concluded that large ev batteries likely to be used in this sector would be well suited to providing a vehicle to grid services reinforcing 
weak rural electricity networks. Lowering the cost of non-road EV ownership, reducing emissions. Now this is crazy stuff. These people are farming us. And I think this is the first time I've realised that what we're starting to see now is nothing. Absolutely nothing. And if farmers don't read this stuff and realise what is coming round the corner, especially in Wales, because they are like banshees at it. It's quite scary reading it all, to be honest with you. Here we are. Look, is in, in for our industry here now. In our net zero advice, Climate Change Committee identified a range of resources uh, but found little evidence relating to cost savings of the measures. Question 26. Buildings. For the majority of the housing stock in the Climate Change Committee's net zero further ambition scenario, it is assumed it be a realistic time frame to roll out energy efficient and low carbon heating. What on earth? I'm having to go through these quietly because you'll get bored otherwise. I just can't really stop. It'll come to the bottom in a minute. And the fair play to the National Farm and Food Farmers Unions. They have replied really well. But the stuff... 1,400 Welsh farms. <coughs> Welsh farms. But these questions are nuts. Because, yeah, nearly... Uh, Choked on my own shock then. Yeah, here's another question, yeah. Advice to government on international in aviation and shipping of net zero. The committee recognises that primary policy approach for reducing, es reducing emissions in these sectors should be set at international level through international civil aviation organisations, international marine organisations, maritime organisations. However, there is still a role for supplementary domestic policies to be complement with the international approach, provided these do not lead to concerns about competitiveness of carbon leakage. What other domestic measures and UK could take to reduce aviation and shipping emissions over the period 2030 to 35 and long term to 2050? Which would not create... They're actually going to destroy this... They want on about cutting fuel emissions by 70 percent. Here's the answer for off the NFU: by 2030 to 35, out and out to 2050, we anticipate that the use of liquid transport biofuels may be confined mostly to long distance aviation and shipping, cutting emissions by 70 percent or more compared to fossil fuels. In line with the emissions saved by sustainable biofuels today, it is important that the UK. Oh, my good God. Now, here, this is what I mean. This is where they are losing it. This is a question of land use off the Climate Change Committee. Remember, Wales are full earnest gangbusters. Question 33, agriculture and land use. In Chapter 7 of the Net Zero Technical Report, we represent our further ambition scenario for agriculture and land use. The scenario requires measures to release land currently used for food production for other uses whilst maintaining current per capita food production. This is achieved through a 20% reduction in red meat and dairy, a 20% reduction of food waste by 2025, moving 10% of horticulture indoors, an increase in agricultural productivity, crop yields rising, and current average of 8 tonnes a hectare to 10 tonnes a hectare. Livestock stock in density increased from 1 livestock unit to 1.5 5, 5 units a hectare. They're increasing everywhere else, but they want to remove all the hill stock farming. But increase yields everywhere else. So that is the plan. Now this is the answer. The Climate Change Committee... Productivity goals for crops and livestock are broadly in line with NFAU's own net zero strategy. So that's a bit worrying though, isn't it? Enhancing productivity, also one of the three cornerstones of NFU Cymru's proposals for a future domestic agricultural policy. Over the next 15 to 20 years, we are expected to achieve increased productivity through better livestock diets, including feed additives, 
Improving livestock health and breeding low GHG fertilizers. Precision agriculture, improved slurry management, skills and training, and resolved barriers of investment may arise from this tenancy. Welsh Government future agricultural policy is a broader age enabling measure to a central bloody blah. Well, then if you believe there should be a 50% reduction in waste throughout the whole food supply. I know you're probably all getting bored of this, but you should keep watching because I've got to another bit here. Agriculture and land use. Land spread through measures set out in question 33 is using our further ambition for afforestation. Basically, planting trees on farms. 30,000 hectares a year. Bioenergy crops, 23,000 hectares a year. Agroforestry and hedgerows, 10% minus of agricultural land. And peatland rest restoration of 50% of upland peat, 25% lowland peat. We also assume the take-up of low-carbon farming practice for soils and livestock. Do you agree that these are the key measures? Yeah, this is nuts. This, these people are insane. Right, this is the reply. In addition to a perennial energy crop, 70, 700,000 hectares by 2050, as suggested by the Climate Change Committee, we believe there will be opportunities in 2020 to further expand production of annually harvested non-food crops, such as hybrid rye, maize, blah. NFU Cymru does not support widespread land use change from agriculture to forestry at the scale proposed by the Welsh Government. We highlight 66,000 hectares of medium to large scale afforestation would result in a loss of 1,400 farms in Wales Average size farm, 48 hectares, with associational, economic, environmental, social. It, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking to hear that the Welsh Government are proposing this. I can barely read this, I'm in such a temper. It's insane, really, this stuff. These people are being answering questions. Here's the uh, well-being of Wales. Fair play to NFU Cymru. They have tried to answer these, you know, in a decent way, but they're under the gun. Civil service is gangbusters on this. And I, I'm really happy the way they've answered these things. So this is a answering of by NFU. It's just worrying to see what they're actually trying to do. So you can read that there now. What is coming through is scary stuff. Very scary stuff. And... <sighs> I don't really know what to say about it all, indeed. But that there, in the middle there, is what's the scary stuff. NFU Cymru does not support widespread land use change from agriculture to forestry at the scale proposed by the Welsh Government. We highlight 66,000 hectares of medium to large scale afforestation would result in the loss of 1,400 farms in Wales, average farm size 48 hectares. Nuts. I'm going to leave it at this now because the video has gone on a lot. But this is true stuff. Uh, it's on the internet. Go and look for yourself. Climate Change Committee sending questions and answers to the NFU of things that they've already decided they're going to do. So Welsh farming, especially hill farming, is in the shit big time. Please comment, rate and subscribe.